We are going to do this on a new set of axes uh, because it's going to get too busy otherwise. However, I'm going to make an argument about this and I'm going to appeal to the previous diagram that we just drew. Okay, so you don't need to draw this. I actually don't want you to draw it on your original one because it's just going to get too clouded. But I want you to look at mine, my original graph with sine x and sine squared on it, as I make this argument. Again, let's think about ordinates, okay? Remember those, what were those easy ordinates that you picked out for me before in this graph? One, uh, one negative one, and zero. They're all really easy ordinates to work with, okay? So bang, 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 bang. Great, I've got some pointers. But then I said, okay, well, tell me about the behavior about the other spots that are not as easy to identify. Right? So I picked out a spot like, say, this. Okay? Let's suppose that ordinate was a half. Okay? So when you square it, what happens? You get a quarter, right? So my scale's not the greatest, but it's close enough. Okay? Now, that makes sense. I'm half the distance. If I cube instead of square, I'm not going to go to a quarter, am I? I'm going to go from a half to an eighth, right? I'm going to be squashed in underneath there, right? I'm always, in fact, because I'm always between zero and one, for instance, you remember I said, oh, nine tenths, okay? That's going to be up here. Nine tenths is 0 0.9. Uh, when I square, I'm going to get 81 over 100, which is 0 0.81, so I'm lower. And then when I cube, What's 9 cubed? It's 729 over 1,000. That's 0 0.729. Do you see the pattern, right? Because I stay between 0 and 1, because I'm dealing with fractions this whole time, every single one of these x's that I draw, it's always going to be underneath every single time. right? So if I could describe this... Wait, so even the stationary point or the stationary point? Well, the stationary point's at 1. Right, so it's still gonna, the cube of one is still one. So I'm still gonna get up to that point. But I'm gonna get up there in a steeper way, like this. Everything is more extreme, okay? So now when I come here, right, the first part that I draw from 0 to 180 is gonna look very, very similar to what I just drew there in blue. It's just gonna be more extreme, like so. Okay, now that's more or less the same, except it's like, it's, it's more pointy, okay? But then something quite different happens when I cross over 180 degrees and go from 180 to 360. What's different? Okay, it's going to go underneath, right? Because we're squaring. I've got even powers, so you're going to get even numbers of negative signs. But you don't get even numbers of negative signs here, right? If sine x is negative, the cube of sine x will also be negative, okay? So you're going to come down here, like so. There you go, right? So what I conclude out of this, just like I said, even powers eliminate sine. Odd powers, because if you did this to the power of 5 or the power of 7, of course you would get the same kind of pattern. Odd powers don't eliminate sine, they preserve sine. Okay. And in conclusion, based on this argument I made here in the black graph and all the x's of these values here, right? the higher you make your power, the more extreme you make the behavior, okay? I suppose if I were to do like sine x to the power of like 100 or something like that, what you're gonna expect oh. is something like this. <laughs> like that, okay? And there we go, okay? Oh, you're right, this be, maybe this is power 101. <laughs> Good call, okay? So, definitely. I was, uh, I was marking some U10 tests today and um, I was putting stickers on some of them because they got like, you know, full marks. And uh, unfortunately I don't have my stickers with me, but I will defer that and give you a, I owe you a sticker. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? You see what we're doing, right? So, number one, we've noticed our evenness and oddness, right? And what that does to sign. And we've also noticed what happens as you increase the power. As you get higher, you get more extreme behavior. Okay, in fact, I might even write that because it's such an important idea. Higher powers. Um, result in more extreme behavior. Your lows get lower, and even though I don't have any of them on this particular graph, suppose our graph went outside 1 and negative 1, right? Like suppose, actually let's just quickly do this now informally. We just did sine x, right? Let's do... 
Let's do two sine x. That's all we need. Okay, now really quickly, we don't need to argue this too much. If I consider this green graph as y equals 2 sine x, that's why my amplitude is negative 2 to 2. Okay, now if I compare this, like just by doing the square, right, when you square this, you get 4 sine squared x. So you can see, hey, look, look, my amplitude, of course, is higher, right? If I'm doing the squared one, everything's going to stay positive, like that guy over there. So now, the crests of this graph are going to be, well, they're going to be twice as high, right? So they'll be up here at 4, like so, and I guess that would mean I'd have one up here, right? So you're going to get this kind of behavior. And the uh, intersection get, point is 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, you would exactly that point there. It's like well, wherever. <laughs> that's, that's bad accuracy. I did it quickly, right? So, so you'd expect actually there should have really intersected around there. Okay, um, there's that ex more extreme behavior that I should have expected. That's why it should have come up faster and dropped off also faster. Okay.